All right, so that looks pretty good, right? Well, let's rotate it around. It's still pretty blocky in this direction. So back to a front view. Now remember, our front view is actually 25 degrees off. So we're gonna to try to rotate this a little bit. And now it's off with our model. So it makes it kind of hard for us to get good angles on modifying this stuff. And this is why rotating it from the get-go makes it a little bit more complicated than it should be. But we're gonna mass select some of these top faces, make sure we don't select too far. And then we're gonna pull these down. And again, we use the rotation option. But remember, we're even though we're using this local option, we're not necessarily rotating or moving local to all the faces that we have selected. Only the ones that are sort of visible right there in the mirror. I'm gonna use the steering wheel tool so I can place the pivot here, and that way my orbit is a little bit easier to deal with. So it doesn't look too bad, but you know, I'm still not perfectly happy with it, but it doesn't look too bad. Now what we can do, because we can cancel this operation. And if we double click this edge, you notice it still goes all the way around. Next thing I wanna do is insert an edge. Now there's a bi-direction option. I'm gonna put in a small value of 0.1 and I'm gonna say okay. Now I used the simple method to insert this and you'll notice that it did a few things. The front face is still mostly flat, but it's not completely flat. And because I use this simple option, it pushed this lip out. And that's okay for us, that's perfectly fine. But now we have to go back and we have to flatten this entire face again, which means that we need to rotate it around, turn off select through, and then it'll allow us to drag and select these and make the process a little bit quicker to get all these points. And grab this one, and these ones over here might be a little tricky. I'll grab that and that one, and then that'll flatten all of them to an average. All right, so maybe we'll turn select through back on, rotate this around. They look pretty flat now. We can go ahead and modify our geometry. So I wanna take this edge right here, and I wanna move it. Again, we'll go back to local, rotate this around. We're gonna pull this edge out just to add a little bit of extra style to it. Everything looks pretty good. We might want to come over, we might want to take this edge and pull this one out just a little bit. Again, just to give it a little bit more style. And then maybe take this edge and rotate it. So what we've done inadvertently is, again, we've messed up the flatten. Right? So hopefully you're starting to see that there's a, an order that things start to work in. So when you're modifying these models, adding something like the crease and the flatten right away, well, it, it can help visualize what you're working with. It can kind of be detrimental because you always have to go back and re-flatten and, and remove the faces. Uh, so it's important that you don't get too fixated on all these details because you can go back to these tools and you can make these tools work pretty much at any point in time. Another thing that you want to stay away from is obviously putting too much detail in here. Now, if we want to add more detail, maybe in this top section, we can subdivide it. Now, subdivide has some negative things that go along with it as well. If we use the simple method, it'll only divide the face that we're looking at, but you'll notice that when I hold the control key down, which allows me to select more faces, it's pushing out all of our geometry. If I select more faces, you can see that it gets worse. Now, the simple method doesn't really care what the shape looks like. It's trying to make equal sized polygons here. Now, if we do exact, what we're doing is we're subdividing the entire model. When we do that, now the shape is still the same, but now we've just extremely complicated the modeling process. Again, let's go ahead and use the steering wheel so we can put the center on here, and that way the, the orbit's a little bit easier to deal with. So now we have a lot of extra divisions here that we have to deal with, which means that when we go back to flatten that face again, and we just have all the more points that we need to control and select and work with, um, and it just makes the process that much harder. One of the beauties about T-splines is, again, the ability to do those isoparms. For now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna change the visibility of these car blueprints because we don't need to see them for what we're doing. We're not trying to match any shapes anymore. We really just wanna focus on the process of editing these things. 
So if we want to add more detail, for instance, in this top area, we can insert a single edge parallel. We'll go ahead and push it to the other side. Say OK. So you notice that again with the simple method, it modifies the surrounding geometry. But if we come in and we use the exact method, again, I'll grab this edge and put a minus in there. As soon as we do that, again, it subdivides. So what this means is that in order to get that extra level of detail by adding an exact line, in this case an edge or subdivide, you end up subdividing the entire model and again just making it more complicated to edit in most cases. So these are things that you want to be very careful with. So the process that I like to follow, and we'll go ahead and we're, we're going to leave this mirror here, but the process that I like to follow is we're going to start, and I'll just place a box here, and again we'll do the same size, 1.75 by 1 inch by 1, and we're going to leave all the divisions at 2, we're going to say OK. Is First off, I'm not going to flatten or crease this edge yet. I'm going to wait until my shape is you know, pretty close before I worry about it. What I want to do is I want to start to get the general shape right. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to maybe rotate it around and push it in two planes, get it pretty close to what I want. And maybe even scale it down in this direction a little bit. So that way the faces are smaller and then I can just push it back. 